Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for this special Princess Cruises webinar. My name is Anna. I'm an industry relations specialist here at CLIA, and I'm excited to introduce our presenter, Wade Menard. Before I do that, I'm just going to quickly go through some housekeeping. This webinar is being recorded, and it will be on CLIA's YouTube channel, which is CLIA Global. The webinar is going to run about 40 to 45 minutes with time for questions at the end. Please feel free to type your questions into the GoToWebinar questions module throughout the webinar, and we'll get to them at the end. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce Wade Menard. Wade has been a BDM with Princess Cruises and Cunard Line for 10 years. Prior to that, he worked as a BDM with Carnival Cruise Lines for a year, and before that, he worked in the airline industry for 23 years, where he started in sales and then moved to a flight attendant role, where he developed his passion for travel. Through this position, he was able to visit hundreds of cities around the world. Take it away, Wade. Thank you so much, Anna. Pleasure to be here today to tell you a little bit about all the exciting things happening with Princess Cruises and more specifically, the wonderful Alaska product that we have for you. So really excited. We're going to get right into this right now. Um, oh, and of course, my screen's not flipping now. Uh oh. This was working just fine. Okay, there we go. So uh, just a little bit about Princess before we get going here. Um, for years, Princess has been known as the destination leader. That's because we sail to all continents on the planet. We like to say if there's an ocean, Princess can take you there. And we're not just building um, itineraries from point A to point B. We really put some thought behind these itineraries and try to build in really special things for our guests to enjoy that destination. Maybe it's a cultural event, a festival of some kind, something that really is going to make that itinerary unique. And that's what's boosted us to the front of the line as far as destination goes and the number one itineraries year after year. So very, very thrilled with that. Now, when it comes to dining. We know that dining is a big part of any cruise vacation and at Princess we're never happy with what we did last year or yesterday or constantly striving to improve our product to make sure that we give a really fantastic uh, dining experience to our guests because that is such a big part of the experience. So of course you probably know already we did hire a, a celebrity chef Mr. Curtis Stone who hails to us from Australia who's revamped our entire dining room menu. You're going to see crafted Curtis Stone uh, menu features on board. That's uh, recipes from Curtis that he's taught our executive chefs how to create that on board the ships. Um, everything on, on the board the ships is called Design for Fresh. So everything is made fresh from scratch daily at Princess. We don't uh, do anything like, uh, say, buy prefabricated cinnamon rolls or bread rolls that all we do is bake. That's not the case at Princess. Everything is made from scratch. In fact, we're baking fresh bread rolls every 15 minutes, 24 seven. That's how much our guests are loving that bread with us. I also wanna talk about our ultimate balconying experience. We're the only cruise line in the world that offers this. Uh, in Alaska, it's a really exciting adventure. Imagine having that balcony breakfast experience while you're sailing up in Glacier Bay National Park. The ship is spinning on a dime. Our staff will come into the balcony, set the table with the linens, all the china, serve them course by course course, and I get to really enjoy that. Of course, we also have a, a beautiful dinner program as well, um, more suited maybe to a warmer client, more romantic, uh, but that still is certainly available. Also, very, very big for Princess Cruises is chocolate. We have Norman Love, the world's premier chocolatier on board our ships, and there is literally chocolate throughout. Uh, we've got great offerings in the Horizon Court buffet area, as well as beautifully and elegantly plated chocolate desserts in our specialty dining rooms, as well as our main dining room, some of which take up to three days to create. We've got chocolate spa treatments, chocolate wine pairings. There is chocolate everywhere on that ship. So if you've got chocoholics in your world, they're definitely going to enjoy Princess. So lots of good dining on board the ships. Uh, entertainment is the next biggest feature that we have to concentrate on after that dining program. Uh, again, something that's so important to our guests. So we've really upped the ante in two levels. The first one was our Broadway style entertainment. We hired Stephen Schwartz, the world's premier Broadway director and producer. He's uh, created such shows, I'm sure you've heard of of them, Pippin, Godspell, and most recently, Wicked. So Stephen has created four musicals exclusively for Princess Cruises. Uh, and when Magic To Do opened on the Crown Princess a couple of years ago, we were the very first cruise line ever to have cruise line entertainment uh, uh, reviewed by American Theatre Magazine. Of course, Magic To Do is a love story set to the, the uh, magic of Houdini. Very, very enthralling as all that magic unfolds right in front of our guests' eyes. 
The second uh, musical that uh, came from Stephen was Born to Dance, interactive kind of show here where we've got Broadway singers and dancers on the stage. Um, and on video screens, we've got maybe the original producer or an actor from that show talking about what it was like to be on Broadway, maybe twisting your ankle five minutes before the curtain goes up and explaining that you know the show must go on. So that one's really well received by our guests as well. And the third one's just opened. It's called The Secret Silk. Of course, this is all about the silk trade and the silk road. Uh, and the real big draw about this one is it's powered by life-size Jim Henson puppets. So that's really exciting. We're thrilled with that. We've got the Love Boat Disco Deck Party going on, all kinds of activities on the ships. And of course, our number one rated entertainment is the voice of the ocean. So if you haven't experienced this, this is just like the television show you're all familiar with. And it starts right at the beginning of the cruise. And every night there's a performance. And it's not cheesy karaoke. These guests can really, really sing. And it's so amazing for us as crew members and staff members to hear them talking with their voice coach about what they're going to sing what they're going to wear. It's really exciting for them. Um, they get weeded out throughout the cruise, and our guests can certainly watch all of that. But the highlight is the last night of the cruise where we crown the voice of the ocean. And uh, this is where we've got it in the Princess Theater. It's also simulcast in two other show lounges because so many people want to see this. Uh, so great entertainment on board. We are guaranteeing our clients they will never, ever be bored when they are sailing with us. So many activities, anything from uh, spas, cooking classes, uh, learning how to play steel drum bands. We've got Festival of the World, and that's just a, a different party, if you will, on each and every one of our ships, uh, complete with costumes, beverage offerings, food offerings, entertainment, all of that rolled in to immerse them in the destination they're traveling to. As well, since we're talking about Alaska today, uh, we've got these great encounters program powered by Discovery Network, which really, really gives them an insight to Alaska. We've got four strangers uh, on board talking about the marine wildlife, uh, all the uh, animals, the glaciers, they really, really give our, guest, our guests a, a good insight to what they're seeing around them and beneath them in the waters. So very, very happy with all of that. Another thing that Princess is very proud of is the fact that we are the only cruise line in the world that prioritizes relaxation and recharging your batteries when you're at sea. That's what it's all about with Princess, is really enjoying the world, exploring this great planet, and recharging your batteries. So many people, I know I've said this, I'm sure you probably have said this before too, travel is amazing, but isn't it great to get back to your own bed? And that's because we don't sleep well when we're away from home and we're traveling. So Princess took care of that and created the Princess Luxury Bed. It's seven layers of comfort created by Dr. Michael Bruce of Oprah Winfrey fame. Uh, and also the linens were created by uh, Candace Olsen from Home and Garden Television. So really, really great uh, sleeping product there. You literally sink in and you do get the best night's sleep. Uh, the head of Cruise Critic recently posted on Cruise Critic that she loved the bed so much uh, that she bought one for her own bed and one for her guest room. And since she's posted that on Cruise Critic, we can't keep them in stock. They're flying off the shelves from our website. So hopefully your guests will really enjoy that aspect of relaxing on Princess and uh, enjoying that great night's sleep. So family is something that's really starting to take a little bit of precedence with Princess as well. I want to stipulate that we will never be the cruise line that has bumper cars and water slides. That's not who we are or what our guests want from us. But we are making it more family friendly uh, to travel with children or grandchildren or even just traveling with friends. So we've done this through a lot of different ways. We now have uh, adjoining cabin doors in all of our ships. As they go through dry dock, we're knocking at a wall, putting in a connecting door just like you would have in a hotel. So 190 of those on each of our vessels where you can connect interior. Uh, as well, we've got family staterooms on each ship now that hold six people. Um, and we're just really thrilled with that. Also, our partnership with Discovery, they've created a new children's program for us called Camp Discovery uh, with all kinds of uh, great entertainment uh, options for the kids, right through younger ones, right up to teenagers. Teenagers. So much to see and do. But we're also noticing that there's a big trend in family vacations traveling together. Maybe mom and dad work or grandma and grandpa live in a different city than their grandchildren. So when they are traveling together, they want to spend time and, and visit with one another, catch up. So we're seeing a lot more family friendly activities like just curling up on a deck chair and watching a movie under the stars. All of that stuff is really, really what our clients are looking for. And that's what we're giving them on our great vacations. So 
Enough about Princess. I want to talk now really about Alaska and why Princess Cruises should be the number one choice for you when going to Alaska. So we are number one in Alaska and have been for the last 11 years in a row. We have been servicing Alaska for 50 years now and uh, we're just so thrilled with the product that we've got. Something that I'm really thrilled with when I started at Princess 10 years ago was to learn that many, many clients who sail with us are loyal to another cruise brand, but they choose Princess for Alaska because of our amazing reputation in this part of the world. So definitely in good hands if you put your clients on an Alaska product with Princess Cruises. So why Alaska? Why are people so excited about going to Alaska? Some people go back every single year. They just enjoy this part of the world so much. Well, the first thing, and the, probably the biggest thing, is it's called the Great Land. It's the last frontier. If we were to take the state of Alaska and somehow uh, place it over the mainland uh, United States, the Aleutian Islands would spread from California and it would spread all the way across the United States to the New York State. So it completely covers the mainland. That's how big the state of Alaska is. It's also one of the last untouched areas of wilderness in the world. There's clean air, there's pristine scenery. It's just so beautiful for people to go there and that's why they keep going year after year after year. Just a little side note here that if you've got somebody who is not sure if they want to go on a cruise, obviously the number one cruise destination for first-time cruisers is the Caribbean. Alaska is number two and if you've got um, a, a lady client who really wants to go on a cruise and she's having a hard time getting her husband to go, Alaska is generally where he'll start because it's the guy's cruise. There's fishing. There's all kinds of activities that appeal to the guys to make this one of those destinations that are really, really family friendly for everybody. Also great for kids. Everybody loves Alaska and that's why it's one of those great, great sellers for us. So now that you know why people want to go to, the, to Alaska and the Great Land, uh, what is it specifically? Let's drill down and find out exactly why and what they want to see. So there are three big things on their bucket list when they choose Alaska. Number one is glaciers. People are fascinated with glacier, glaciers and there's fewer and fewer places on the planet where we can see these. And Alaska has some of the biggest and the best and the most famous glaciers in the world. So we can take you to these glaciers via ship. We can take you via air on shore excursions. We can uh, uh, do flight seeing operations, land right down on the glaciers for you. And of course, you can also go inland uh, in the city of Juneau. You can go to the Mendenhall Glacier. So those are great opportunities. That's the number one reason people go to Alaska is to see those glaciers. And Princess can give you more glacier viewing opportunities than any other cruise line. So, of course, we go to the Marjorie Glacier, which is Glacier Bay National Park. That's the biggest, the best, and the most famous, and only Princess has priority to go into this state park on every single one of our voyages, uh, Voyage of the Glacier's itineraries. So that's really exciting, but we also take you to Hubbard Glacier or College Fjord on every one of those cruises. Now, College Fjord is made up out of 16 different glaciers, all named after colleges, who funded the exploration of this area in the beginning. Um, so great opportunity there. We also can take you to Icy Strait Point, Tracy Arm, just so many amazing glaciers to see in this part of the world. Uh, and believe it or not, the as you can see in that picture, you can see all the striations in the ice, as well as that beautiful crystal blue color of the ice. Believe it or not, you see more of the color when it's cloudy outside. So if people are worried about weather and it being rainy and cool in, in Alaska, the viewing is even better when it's gray outside. So there's never a disappointment in this part of the world. So number one is glaciers. The second reason that people are really drawn to Alaska is the wildlife. Uh, again, we talked about how big the state of Alaska is and that it's the un touched wilderness. So you're going to see more animals and wildlife in their natural habitats in this part of the world uh, than anywhere else in America. There's such a wide diversity of different types of animals, both marine life as well as uh, land-based animals. Uh, so much to see and do and people are constantly taking pictures, pointing and ooing and aahing because really it is breathtaking, especially if you have the privilege of seeing an eagle up close and personal. Um, they're so big, you don't actually realize how large they are until there's one right beside you and, and they're just a massive majestic bird. So this is a really great opportunity for people to go in uh, and just add that to their bucket list. 
The third reason people want to go to Alaska is that wonderful scenery, Denali National Park. It's on so many people's uh, bucket lists. And of course, the ability to see Mount McKinley, which has recently been renamed Denali. Uh, it is one of the largest mountains uh, in North America. It's the tallest, but it's also got that wide girth at the bottom. That, that mountain is such a large, massive structure that it actually creates its own weather system. So believe it or not, only 30% of the people that go to Alaska get to see it clearly because usually there's so much weather uh, with clouds circulating at the top of that mountain. So if they do get to see it, they're really, really lucky. I also want to point out that on our cruise tours, we can set wake-up calls that if the, the uh, clouds clear in the middle of the night, remember it doesn't get dark uh, very much in Alaska in the summer months. So if it gets clear, the clouds part for us, we'll phone our guests and wake them up if they've requested it so they can go outside and see that beautiful great mountain. But that's the number three reason. So we've got glaciers, wildlife, and the beauty of Denali National Park and the mountain. So now you know why they want to go to Alaska. Why do they want to go with Princess? Why should you be recommending Princess first for this product? Very, very simple. Um, I mentioned we've been number one in Alaska for the last 11 years in a row, serving Alaska for over 50 years. So we've got great relationships with land suppliers, with shore excursion operators. Um, and again, more people see Alaska with Princess than any other cruise line, even people that are loyal to another brand. So we've really got the best program happening in Alaska for all of our guests to really enjoy and delve in deep to make sure they get the best uh, experience here. So something Princess is really, really uh, taking to heart and something we strive to do on each and every one of our cruises is that we immerse our guests in the culture or the destination before they even leave. So for example, if a passenger is boarding our ship in Seattle or Vancouver, uh, they're going to notice that a lot of our crew are dressed in blue jeans, red and black plaid lumberjack shirts. Um, they might have little toques on, they might be carrying uh, some axes. It's all designed to make them feel like they're in Alaska the minute they board the ship not a couple of days later when they arrive there. We're gonna have Alaskan uh, themed tapestries hanging in the piazza. They'll be served Alaskan food. There'll be Alaskan entertainment, all to really immerse them. And that's what we're all about is giving them what no other cruise line can by immersing them in that uh, destination of the world. We've also got festivals of the world to promote the Alaska product and a really great uh, onboard experience, which is called North to Alaska. So North to Alaska has won us awards year over year. Um, unfortunately, it's really difficult to show a video on a webinar. It just sort of comes out jumpy and, and hitched. But um, I would urge you to go to YouTube, type in Princess Cruises North to Alaska, and this will come out. Um, and I can probably send you a link for this after the webinar is over as well. But very well worth seeing this short video. It, it'll explain the whole product of North to Alaska for you. So just in a nutshell, here's what's going on. We are going to stop at the very first port of call, which is Ketchikan. We're going to board the freshest seafood right out of the Alaskan waters. So halibut, crab, and salmon. Not only are we boarding that seafood, but we're also bringing along Alaskan restaurateurs who are going to teach our executive chefs how to make that food for you in an authentic Alaskan manner. So your clients are really going to have the best Alaska product when they're eating in any of the venues on board our ships. We're also going to go to great restaurant tours out there, uh, and we're going to bring their snack food on to be served in our burger bar by the pool. So we're now serving crab cakes, for example, uh, fish tacos, all kinds of great things that are normally only available at these wonderful restaurants ashore that people have to pay for. Now they can get them complimentary by our pool and really, really enjoy that. We're also going to do something very fun called puppies in the piazza. So how wonderful is this that we're going to bring the, the, the young puppies, the sled dogs, into the piazza of the ship so people can bond with them, play with them, learn how they're trained and how they, uh, you know, go through their life to become a, a champion dog sled. Uh, racer. So that's a lot of fun for our clients. We've got great authentic seafood, as I mentioned, on board the ships. Uh, we've also got the loggerheads, which is a, a great entertainment troupe from Ketchikan. They're throwing axes across the Princess Theater, if you can believe it. Um, just so much. And that's all about North to Alaska, that wonderful product. Of course, it's also powered by Discovery Network, the largest multimedia corporation in the world, which is also going to give us the ability to give some absolutely amazing shore excursions to our guests that they can't get anywhere else. So 
when you're looking or your clients are looking through our shore excursions, you'll notice the Discovery exclusives or the Animal Planet exclusives. Those are Discovery's uh, shore excursions that you can't get anywhere else. They're exclusive to Princess. And our clients that go on these rate the port of call higher uh, and they rate their experience higher if they do these shore excursions than if they did something on their own or simply took a different shore excursion with somebody else. Um, so they really dive deep in, give you a, a wonderful learning experience. The lady holding the crab in this picture, that is on the shore excursion called The Deadliest Catch, um, based after the television show from Discovery. Uh, it's actually held on the Aleutian Ballad and we actually take people out into the Gulf of of Alaska, show them how we uh, go fishing for crab, spot prawns, salmon. But the highlight for this uh, short excursion, in my estimation anyway, was you go to an eagle sanctuary and the people that are running the boat will throw great big pieces of salmon into the water. And within seconds, 50, maybe 75 enormous bald eagles will swoop down feet from you to grab that, wa that salmon out of the water. It's mind-blowing to see these beautiful, majestic creatures up close and personal. Everybody's got these great opportunities to take photos. A really wonderful day. And only Princess can bring you uh, the deadliest catch. So that's certainly a highlight. Um, in fact, the Skagway Yukon uh, pass, White Pass Railroad used to be the number one rated shore excursion in Alaska. It's still up there, but now we've got uh, this one that is really surpassing. Everybody loves this, the deadliest catch. We also have the exclusive rights to a wonderful lady named Libby Riddles. For those of you who don't know Libby, she was the very first woman ever to have won the Iditarod Dog Race. Now she entered this race in a time where it was a, a male dominated sport and everyone mocked her, made fun of her, they teased her, they told her she wasn't gonna succeed uh, and she forged on. Unfortunately, she fell off her dog sled and she nearly froze to death. Um, it was minus 50 outside. She lost all of her food. She lost all of her, her pack of supplies and she lost her dog team. Not only though did Libby survive, she ended up winning the race. She was the very first female to win the Iditarod dog race and she has a wonderful presentation on board Princess all about what she went through in that lifestyle. She brings her dogs with her on board and she'll teach you all about dog sledding. Really, really great experience. You can even then do a shore excursion powered by Discovery where we'll fly you up in a float plane up to the glacier ice fields where the dogs are all uh, raised and they're trained and you can actually go on a beautiful dog sledding race with uh, another team. So kind of fun to experience that. And again, exclusive to um, Princess Cruises. So that's not where it ends. We have all of these great things that you've seen on Discovery Network, the Deadliest Catch, Gold Rush, Miss Butters, and of course Shark Week. All of those take over the ship when we are going to Alaska because they are so much fun. For example, Shark Week. We will actually lower people into the ocean uh, in a metal cage uh, I'm sure you've seen on TV and the sharks swim around. I don't know why anybody would pay to do that, but they love it. So we've transformed the elevators in the ship into a shark cage. And when you're in there, it looks like there's sharks on the outside trying to get you. Also, all of our children on board the ships get little shark fin hats uh, and they'll swim in the water with the shark fin sticking out. A lot of fun. There's special drinks. Uh, there's all kinds of things that really, really enhance these TV programs and make them come to life on board our vessels all powered with Discovery by making that Alaska brand even more exciting for our customers to enjoy. So why choose Princess among any other brand? Well, it's simply because we have this great product, but we also have more itineraries than any other cruise line out there. We can take you to Alaska from Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, or Vancouver. Our number one rated itinerary is the Voyage of the Glaciers, and it's seven days between Vancouver and Whittier. You can either sail northbound or southbound. So Whittier is just south of Anchorage, Alaska. And the reason we really believe that that is the number one rated, and it's why it's our number one bestseller in Alaska, uh, if you look at the picture on your screen now, you can see the blue line is uh, a seven-day round trip out of Seattle or Vancouver. It's a beautiful itinerary, but you can only get as far as the city of Skagway in seven days before you have to return to come back to your home port. With the Voyage of the Glaciers, we're going one way. So you're sailing a full 400 nautical miles across the Gulf of Alaska. You have the opportunity to see College Fjord, that huge glacier bank made out of 16 different glaciers, and of course, arriving in the port of Whittier. So 
much better opportunity. You're going to see more of, of Alaska. And that's why so many people are traveling uh, all the way up here. And they think, you know, if I'm going to go all the way to Alaska, I want to see more and do more. Um, so definitely that's why the, the Voyage of the Glaciers is the bigger seller and the better opportunity for people. So on those cruises, the standard ports of call are Juneau. Uh, that is the capital of Alaska and the home to Mendenhall Glacier. Our guests can go up there on a shore excursion or hike up there on their own. Um, really great opportunity to actually put feet on a glacier. Uh, that doesn't happen very often, so that's a lot of fun. Juneau is one of the only cities in the world uh, that is accessible only by air or by ship. You cannot drive in there. There are no highways because of the rocky terrain and the, and the uh, frozen frigid temperatures in the winter. Skagway is what's known as the gold rush era. This is where all of the um, people in search of gold, that's where they started and they packed up their mules, packed up their backpacks and hiked up into the mountains from this starting point to uh, try and strike it rich during the gold uh, rush era. Ketchikan, it's the salmon capital of the world in the summertime. The streams and rivers in there run pink with beautiful, beautiful salmon swimming in the water. There's thousands of them. Uh, and of course, historic uh, Creek Street, very, very famous part of this. This is where the miners and uh, the gold rush guys would come down for a little bit of R&R. &R. So there's a lot of uh, um, great bars and restaurants on Creek Street, as well as brothels. Uh, there's the old Museum of Dollies, which was one of the world's famous uh, brothels, where all of the guys used to go um, when they had a few days off from, uh, from their work in the mines. So beautiful, great itineraries with these beautiful, iconic cities to stop in really does take you back uh, to you know, that gold rush era. So now that you know about the cruise, we want to tell you about the very, very best way to see Alaska, and that, of course, is a cruise tour. And this is what makes Princess so unique in the marketplace because no other cruise brand out there can compare to what we're doing. We have our cruise, obviously. It's combined with our Princess exclusive rail service uh, and then our lodges on land. So those three aspects put together, the cruise, the rail, and the land, is what gives you a cruise tour. So we have four different types of cruise tour. The first one is called Denali Explorer, and this is probably our most popular one. Uh, it's, it's just a simple seven-day cruise uh, with uh, your land, anywhere from three to six days on land. Uh, so there is no meals included on land in this tour, um, but it is the most popular because it gives you the direct to the wilderness service, and I'll talk in a minute about why that is so very important. The second type of uh, cruise tour we have is called On Your Own. This is for people that are really adventurous, and they don't want any regimented tour tours built in. Uh, they don't have anything to do once they get there. It's basically the cruise and their lodging is what's paid for in that cruise tour. And then they do whatever they want when they get there. A lot of backpackers, kayakers, all that kind of thing. Um, the real adventurous type, this is what they're going to prefer versus maybe going on a bus tour of uh, Denali National Park, that kind of thing. Off the beaten path, uh, this is another wonderful cruise tour uh, um, opportunity that's going to take you to our smaller lodges, the Copper River Lodge and Kennecott, and also um, you know the, the smaller lodges where it's off the beaten path. So it's a different kind of feel, a different experience, not as many people, uh, but still a wonderful, wonderful experience. The bottom one, Connoisseur, this is our cream of the crop. This is the best of the best. Uh, it's also the best commission for our travel partners because it is the most expensive. Uh, all of the meals are included and you've got one escort or guide for the entire journey. So if we look back up again at the Denali Explorer, there will always be a tour guide with our guests. However, you may have John on the train and Sally on the motor coach, and it's going to be a different guide every time. Whereas Connoisseur, most of your meals are included, and you're going to have the exact same guide with your clients for the entire journey. Now, I want to stress that any of these cruise tour options are just so fantastic for clients because we look after them um, from start to finish. They don't have to touch any of their luggage. We transport everything right from the ship to all the lodges. It's just a seamless product. For example, if somebody is checking out of McKinley Wilderness Lodge and they're headed over to Denali Wilderness Lodge, we ask them to pack their luggage and just leave it in their stateroom. When they get on the bus and they'll be transported by motor coach to the next lodge, we go around and collect all the luggage, put it on a truck and ship it up and it'll be waiting for them in their room when they check into the next lodge. So seamless, uh, so user-friendly and easy that even elderly people that have mobility issues 
will not have a problem enjoying a cruise tour because we really, really look after them. So again, on the connoisseur, most of the meals are included. Um, on the other ones, there are no meals included. And I have to say it is a bit of a, a sticker shock to your clients, especially if they're sailing northbound on a cruise where they open the menu and they can eat as much as they want and there's no prices. When they get to the lodges in Alaska, there are prices. So that's a bit of a sh sticker shock for them. However, as your travel agent, you can actually buy them a meal plan, uh, which they pay for in advance. And that sort of takes that, that sting away, if you will, from looking at a price. Uh, they just get vouchers where they turn it in for the food um, and they can enjoy all of that. So there are um, two different, within the four different groups, there are two different types of shore excursions and I've, uh, sorry, of cruise tours. And I've given you two examples here. So if you look in our brochure, you'll see the very first cruise tour is A, they go all the way down the alphabet. Um, so on the left, that is tour A. It's 10 nights and it's going to include a seven day cruise with three nights on land. And you can see at the bottom of the picture, it says tour AB3. That means it's tour A, the land portion is before the cruise and you have three nights on land. The one on the right-hand side states MA6, so that is Tour M, the land is after the cruise, and you're on land for six days. You could also buy MB6, which would be uh, Tour M, land before the cruise for six days. So hopefully that makes sense and helps you decipher a little bit about what you're looking at in the brochures. It's really simple when you know that, that the A and B just signifies it's before or after the cruise. So the majority of our customers, uh, for some reason, tend to choose to sail southbound. That is the more popular and the more expensive of the two cruise tours between north and south. The reason being is a cruise tour is quite active. When you're on land, you're constantly going from one lodge to the other. Uh, you're up and you're seeing things. You're hiking. Uh, it's very nice then to get on this cruise and relax for seven days southbound. As well, if you're traveling southbound, you arrive at Glacier Bay Park in the afternoon. You don't have to get up so early in the morning. Whereas if you're sailing northbound, we arrive very early between 5 and 6 a.m. So guests have to get up early to really take advantage of Glacier Bay National Park. So hopefully that will help you understand our coding on uh, those cruise tours. If not, please reach out to your local business development manager in your area of the world. They'd be very, very happy to help you decipher this and give you a little bit more in-depth training on that one. Um, so when it comes to cruise tours, the reason, again, is because people want to see Denali National Park, they want to see uh, the glaciers, and you're going to get both of those on every single cruise tour that we do, Glacier Bay National Park and Denali. Um, with all of the cruise tours except um, on your own, we're going to take you on a tundra cruise. Uh, tour up into Denali National Park, which is fantastic. That's where they're going to see the majority of the animals uh, and all that wildlife up there. So that's a beautiful, beautiful a day and a great way to see that. So with the cruise tours, um, of course, the first part of it is a cruise. It's a seven-day voyage. As we've determined, it's either northbound or southbound. Glacier Bay is not to be missed. We're so excited about that. However, You'll notice in our brochures now that we are going on certain itineraries to different areas such as Tracy Arm or Icy Strait Point. And that's just because people repeat the Alaska product with us so much that we wanted to give them something different to see. And we're getting great reviews on that as well. Um, beautiful shore excursion in Tracy Arm where you can get on a, a catamaran and actually go up close and personal to those beautiful glaciers. So great opportunity to keep going back and forth. Uh, you're going to see a lot each and every time you go there. So lots of wildlife, great ports. Um, uh, something travel agents always ask us is, do you really need a balcony in Alaska? And the answer to that is absolutely. Um, sometimes the weather is just like it is in the Caribbean. It's so hot, it's beautiful, and there's so much to see outside that we really think you're just doing a disservice if you don't talk to them or offer them a balcony because they're going to be much happier. So while they're on that cruise, we are totally going to immerse them in Alaskan cuisine. So we've got the reindeer chili rockfish chowder cook-off. That's a lot of fun. Um, pictured there is the Taste of Alaska Buffet right out on the open deck in front of Glacier Bay. Uh, so much fun to see that. We've got the champagne breakfast. We've got a special menu in the uh, Crown Grill restaurant the Alaskan seafood menu in there. We've also got the, uh, the great Alaskan dinner in the main dining room and all of those wonderful products coming from shore from great restaurants onto the ship that we talked about earlier, such as the crab cakes and the fish tacos. 
So the second part of the cruise tour, you've got the cruise and then you've got the rail service. This is where we start to really see the differences between Princess and anybody else. We have direct to the wilderness rail service. So the bottom left hand corner picture, that is the Port of Whittier. As you can see, there's really not a lot there. Just around the corner, there's a few buildings, but not much there. If you're traveling on our sister brands or our competition, they would have to put you on a train or a bus and send you into Anchorage. When you get to Anchorage, the Alaska State Railway has already left for the day to Denali National Park, so you must stay overnight in Anchorage. Not a bad thing. There's lots to see and do there. But if your clients are maximizing vacation time, this is why it's so important. We literally transport their luggage to the train. All they do is walk across the sidewalk, get on our beautiful trains, and they're in Denali National Park that very afternoon. So spectacular way to see it. Uh, the double-decker rail cars are exclusively owned by Princess Cruises. Um, there is a tour guide upstairs and sort of pub food upstairs in the dome. Downstairs, there's a more formal sit-down dining room. Again, there is a cost for this, or you can uh, buy it through the connoisseur package would have it all included, or you can buy those meal uh, vouchers in advance for them. Outdoor viewing platforms, great for, for photography, and the whole train system has just been renovated. So in this next picture that's just coming up on your screen now, you're going to see what it looks like today. Uh, so more of an airplane kind of feel with all of the seats facing forward with the fold down trays, uh, really easy for the attendant to serve drinks and, and the bar service and food service up there, as well as point out really great um, things that you need to see. Uh, so if you look at the map on the right hand side, uh, if you're going to McKinley Princess Wilderness Lodge, you're going to go up from Whittier to Talkeetna, uh, and then we're going to put you in a motor coach and take you to the, the McKinley Lodge 45 minutes away. So you can see you are really, really in the heart of Alaska when you do these cruise tours. Uh, our wilderness lodges are really in the heart of Alaska and it's just so beautiful up there because it's really giving you an opportunity to relax and enjoy that. So the third part of that cruise tour, we've got the cruise, now we've got the rail, now we've got the lodges. This is again what separates us because no other cruise line owns or operates their own lodges. They would put you in or your clients in a hotel and hope that you get the same great service that they offer on their ships. We know you're going to get that because it's our lodges, our food, and our princess staff. So very, very proud of what we've got. We've got five lodges up in Alaska. Um, you're gonna get two nights in Denali National Park on all of our uh, cruise tours uh, with the option to see Wrangell St. Elias, the largest national park in the United States, or even that small lodge up on Kenai Peninsula. So lots of great things to see and do there. Um, the lodges, as I said, are absolutely beautiful. They are open only May through September. And after that, we have to clear everything out, even the pens. Uh, can you imagine the ink cartridge in a pen? It's so cold in the winter in Alaska that they freeze solid. And when it melts in the spring, the cartridges explode. We found that out the hard way. Uh, so it's really really truly in the middle of nowhere. So the first one is Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge, and this is only one mile from the National Park, Denali National Park. This is probably the busiest of all of our lodge locations. There are other hotels and properties in the vicinity, restaurants that are off-site of the Princess property, uh, but great views of the mountain, as well as this is where you're going to do the tundra tour into Denali National park and see all that great wildlife. So you can see the um, staterooms in the uh, lodge are very sort of rugged feeling. Um, they've got that Alaska feel. The chairs and things are made out of birch trees and we try to make it authentic as possible. And they're constantly refurbishing and refreshing these rooms just like we do with our ships. So that's a great one. Uh, Denali is by far the busiest one and one of the most popular that people really want to see because it's so close to the park gates and that's where they get that wonderful tour. However, the most scenic and the most relaxing of our lodges is Mount McKinley Princess Wilderness Lodge. Now, this is the one where if you flew in, or sorry, if you took the train into Talkeetna, we would have to put you on a motor coach, and it's a 45-minute drive from Talkeetna in the middle of nowhere. We had to dig great big water reservoirs under the hotel uh, to give you all the comforts of, of any other modern hotel. Uh, there's satellite television, there's internet, there's hot tubs, uh, beautiful outdoor balconies overlooking the mountain. It's just fantastic. We've got a theater in here where you can go see fantastic Alaskan entertainment, learn about the gold rush, learn about the first people to uh, be successful and climb Mount McKinley or Denali as it's called now. Uh, really, really exciting. And again, we do have those wake up calls uh, if you wanna see the, the mountain in the middle of the night, but uh, very remote, 
very beautiful and you do really feel like you're getting away from it all when you're um, in McKinley Wilderness Lodge there. Of course, this year we built an add-on to the McKinley Lodge and it's called the Treehouse. You may have seen uh, a television show by Discovery called the Treehouse uh, and this isn't for kids. This is an absolute breathtaking uh, treehouse way up high uh, where you get the most amazing views of the mountains uh, and uh, the beautiful forest and all that kind of stuff. Inside there's uh, almost like a museum of things that will show you what's happening in, in uh, the forest and the animal life and how people and, and animals live in this area of the world. So so that's in the treehouse. Lots of excitement and brand new. It just opened in 2018. So really excited to have that uh, for our guests to do in, in uh, that lodge as well. So smaller lodge, Kenai Princess Wilderness Lodge, only 86 cabins available in here. And it's our highest scoring Princess Lodge from our guests. Unfortunately, not a lot of our guests go there. They all want to go to McKinley and Denali because those are where the action is and where the, 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 the you know, the, the park is. Uh, this is one of those smaller ones that's off the beaten path. Really fantastic though. Every hotel room has its own private balcony and its own wood burning stove. It's overlooking a river. There's great fishing to be had here. Um, and I mean, of, of course you guys know that you, uh, you can do shore excursions in these lodges just like you can on a ship. So you can go flight seeing, you could go fishing, you could go whitewater rafting, all kinds of activities. So you'll never be bored when you're in these lodges either. You take it as fast or as slow as you want, just like on any of our ships. Another of the small lodges is Copper River, um, and this was designed to look like the Kennecott Copper Mine, uh, and this is very, very close to Wrangell St. Elias, the largest national park in America. Uh, and from this lodge, you can see the Alaska Pipeline, which is uh, particularly interesting to a lot of people. Um, to get to this, you actually have to go from the Port of Whittier uh, across to the Kenai Peninsula on a catamaran. So that's even, you know, just knocks it up an, another level to uh, for all those guests that are really excited about going to the small lodge. So lots to see and do here again, but again, much more relaxed uh, than any of the other lodges that we have in our system. So everybody always asks me, what's the best time to send my clients to Alaska? So I put this chart together for you. Uh, we'll just go through this. Um, the, the, if you see DNP, that's Denali National Park, the average temperatures for those months, and then Juneau, the average temperatures uh, in that city. So May and June, believe it or not, are the driest of the summer season for uh, as far as rain goes. Um, Ketchikan is the rainiest place on the planet, and it rains a lot there, uh, but May and June are your driest months. Of course, we can't control the weather. You could have amazing weather July, August, and September. That's when it's the warmest, but you could encounter a bit of rain. Next level down for whale viewing opportunities. Uh, it's great all through the season, but the very best time to see whales is July. Okay, uh, Land of the Midnight Sun, where it gets dark only for a very short period of time, and it doesn't even completely get dark, that's in June and July. And of course, the best time to see the Northern Lights is in September. If you're interested in the wildlife and the bears especially, the best time to see them is May and June. They've been hibernating all winter. They're getting out. They're hungry, so they're out and about looking for food. For the rest of the summer, you don't really see them as much because it gets too warm for them during the day. So they hide and sleep in the shade, and then they go out foraging for food at night. Salmon fishing, again, great throughout the whole season, but the very best time salmon season is June and July. Peak periods, uh, highest cost in cruise, June, July, August, obviously, and the shoulder seasons, go without saying as being a little bit less expensive. So hopefully that'll help you uh, determine when to put your clients on the ship. So do we have any tips to help you do this? Of course we do. The first thing you need to do is determine how much time they want to spend online and what they want to see. So you can do anywhere from three to, you know, up to eight, nine days on land. So it's a great opportunity for you to really, really give those qualifying questions, ask what they're interested in seeing. I always say when you're talking to a client interested with Alaska, really, really ask them what it is that you want to see and what will you be really disappointed if you don't see. If they really want to see wildlife, try to put them on a cruise tour because they're going to see so many more animals uh, than the few animals that are available from the ports that we stop at. So they have to go inland to really see more of that. Then you also have to determine, do they want to do the land portion before or after their cruise? It's a personal preference. Everybody has a different idea. I personally like sailing southbound better because you do have that go, go, go aspect of the cruise tour followed by the relaxing cruise. Okay, But the southbound are more expensive than the northbound, so that could be a, a 
preference for your clients as well. Also, what type of ship? We have smaller ships right up to the larger ships. Royal Princess will be joining us in 2019, uh, which has 3,500 guests. So very important to see what their preferences are about the size of the ship they're going on. We also want to talk about those remote launches. A lot of people don't even know those ones exist. They know about Denali, McKinley, uh, perhaps the one up in Fairbanks, the Princess Lodge up there. Um, but Kenai and Copper, really, really those small lodges that have to be explained to them and why they're special and why they need to go there. So uh, also talk to them about the Tundra Wilderness Tour if they want to do a longer one. Suggest they have two nights at Denali um, because normally we do one night at Denali and one night at McKinley. So if they want to do the longer tour, it's really a full day tour really deep into the countryside of uh, Denali National Park. So that is best if uh, they have two full days at that lodge. So remember to always recommend a balcony. That's a big part about it. Um, and remember that there are so many different opportunities for them to personalize their experience with shore excursions just like the cruise being held uh, from the land-based uh, lodges. And we have uh, people, it's just like a short excursion desk on our ship. It's, uh, you know, available in the lodges and they can just go book anything they like or certainly wander off on their own and just enjoy the countryside or relax in a hot tub and have a glass of wine. So I hope you've enjoyed that quick presentation today on Alaska and uh, the fact that Princess has been going there for uh, 50 years, 11 straight years in a row as the number one cruise brand in Alaska. It just keeps getting better for us and we're certainly adding more and more features to this product to make it uh, more vibrant and exciting whenever we can. But the, obviously the biggest part there is we have the direct to the wilderness experience exclusive experience that gets them from the ship to Denali National Park that very day. Uh, it's a really seamless product and only Princess has those wilderness lodges owned and operated by us, which gives them that great food and the signature service that we're famous for. And of course, people are going to go to Alaska and come back with outstanding memories that will last a lifetime. Great area for family to go, for children. Again, first time cruisers, really popular with this area of the world. So if you have any questions whatsoever about Alaska or any uh, thing to do with Princess or a product, please reach out to your local BDMs. We're here to help and support you. Uh, and we just want to thank you for all that you do to fill our ships and especially the great Alaska product. So we're going to open it up now for a few questions in case anybody has anything. Hopefully I'll be able to answer you uh, and we'll go from there. Great, Wade. Thank you so much for that. Um, Thanks, yeah. Those pictures were beautiful, and that was so informative. Uh, we do have a bunch of questions, so I'll get to them in just a second. Um, but first, I just want to ask, a lot of people are wondering where they can get some brochures, and they're also wondering if it's possible for them to get a copy of your chart um, listing when the best time to go is for all those features in Alaska. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, first, let's do the brochures. If you go to onesourcecruises.com, that is our travel agent website. Um, if you go in there, once you get to the homepage, uh, in the bottom left-hand corner, there's order, collateral, and more. So you just click on that. Uh, any of our brochures, our posters, letterhead, uh, shells, all of that is available for you in there. You just have to click on what you want, how many of them they, you want, uh, and we will ship it right to your office or your home if you're home-based. Uh, very, very easy to get your hands on. Again, if you do find this confusing, um, reach out to your local BDMs. They will be able to assist you with that. Um, and I also have a flyer that I can probably send you afterwards along with this chart that um, explains exactly step-by-step step how you go about ordering the brochures. So uh, I think we can get your emails after that and send that to you. Yep, and just to confirm, you said um, one source cruising thing. OneSourceCruises.com. Cruises. Cruises. Yeah. So you're going to need a login in order to access that website. If you haven't got it yet, you'd have to go to the host agency you're working for or your owner, manager, whatever the situation might be, and they would have to give you a login to that website where you can sign in. It's also where you would go look at, say, travel agent rates, uh, where you would be able to look at um, – uh, ordering brochures, there's a, a something very similar to Google. It's called Answers, and it's a big magnifying glass. When you click on it, you would just type in anything you want. Like, for example, uh, when was the Star P Princess last renovated? And it would bring up all the information about that. So it's like a Google at your fingertips in the princess world. A whole host of uh, information on that website. The Princess Academy is also there, our online training academy, that when you complete it, you get a free cruise for you and a guest. Never expires. So... Definitely want to look into that one, onesourcecruises.com. 
Oh, that's perfect. And I just sent that out to everyone, so they should have that link. Um, we do have a lot of people wondering about when the best time to go is for whales or for the Northern Lights. Um, so is that chart something that they can get a copy of out um, with the brochures? Um, we don't actually have that printed that you can order it with brochures, but I'll be happy to forward it to everybody that's on the website or, you know, through you, Anna, or if, however, but we'll get it to them for sure. No problem at all. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And then with that, let's get into some other questions. Julie is wondering where the Eagle Sanctuary is. Okay, the Eagle Sanctuary, Julie, it's on the Deadliest Catch Shore Excursion. So to tell you exactly where it is, I don't know. It's some little island uh, that's on a reserve in the Gulf of Alaska. And the Aleutian Ballad ship just pulls up very close to the shoreline, and they have buckets of cut-up salmon, and they just throw it in the water. And the eagles, I'm quite sure by this point, are very used to that boat coming around. So whenever they see it, they probably start getting ready, and they just swoop in and grab that. But it's the deadliest catch, uh, and that is out of the, I want to say it's Ketchikan. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember, did I do that in Ketchikan or was it Skagway? No, it's definitely, it's Ketchikan. Okay, okay. perfect. perfect. Okay. Our next question Our next is from Deborah, who Deborah. is wondering if your 2020 itineraries are out for Alaska. Um, currently not yet. We're, so the 2019 ones have been released. We're expecting 2020 to come out in about March. So shortly into the new year, they'll be released for 2020. Right now, we're only selling till the end of 2019. Okay, great. This next question is from Elizabeth, who is wondering specifically where she can find information on cruise tour excursion options online. Oh, okay. Um, you can go, if you actually, again, onesourcecruises.com, um, you can go in there and look at them, or go to princess.com where a customer would go uh, and click on shore excursions, things to do, and uh, type in Alaska, and all of that will come up for you in there. Okay, great, that is easy enough. And our next question is from Gina, who is wondering why there is no longer an off the beaten path option for both Kenai and Copper River Lodges. Does she mean at the same time on the same itinerary? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, pro to be very honest, it's just because they're not as popular as the other ones and we had a trouble f filling them. So they've sort of separated it a little bit just to try and, you know, maybe have one of the smaller lodges included with, say, Denali and McKinley, and that way they get a taste of it. Um, but they're juggling it around. It's just based on the volume that we're selling, and that was one of the things we struggled to fill each year. So they've changed it. Doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. Uh, Princess tends to do this with all of their cruise itineraries as well as uh, short, um, sorry, uh, cruise tours, is that we change it up every couple of years just to give different options for people that want to go back to the same destination but see something different. Okay, great. This next question is from Eric, who is wondering if any of your Alaska ships have indoor pools or indoor observation lounges. Wow, very good question. Um, all of our ships that we have serving the Alaskan waters all have an indoor pool. Um, you, you guys have probably all been on ships before. Ours are those ones with the retractable dome ceiling. So if it's very, very hot and, and beautiful weather, they can open the retractable ceiling to have an open air concept. However, they were purposely built for this that if we do have inclement weather, the, the ceiling will close and they're able to enjoy an indoor pool atmosphere. To be very honest with you, um, they usually leave the, the ceiling closed, even if it's beautiful outside, because there are outdoor pool options. Um, so they usually leave that one as an indoor. Um, indoor observation lounges, again, yes, on every single one of our ships, because that is such a important thing, because sometimes it can be very, very cold in Alaska, uh, and people don't want to be on the open air decks, but they still want to see everything. So we do have lounges on each and every one of our ships, sometimes at the very, very front on the top deck or at the back, where they can just sit and enjoy a coffee or a hot chocolate and uh, watch the world go by when they're in glacier country, for sure. Okay, okay. great. great. This next question is from Peggy, who is wondering if you think the train tours are the best to see the animals. Absolutely. Um, 
I know this sounds a bit cheesy, but the animals don't come to the port and wave at our guests. If you really want to see the animals, you have to go inland. Um, this is where they're living. Um, most of them don't come down to the ocean as much as they would go down to a different body of water. So going in the train, going into the inland, to the heart of the country, uh, and especially in Denali National Park. It's a preserved park. Um, there's no hunting or anything like that allowed in there. So there's wildlife abundantly. It's just everywhere. Uh, so you'll see like bears and doll sheep and elk, uh, all kinds of wildlife in there. But definitely, without a doubt, you're going to see more animals if you go inland on the, on the train versus just on the cruise. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And it looks like this looks next like question is our last, last one, one, unless anyone gets another one in here in the next couple minutes. Okay. It's from Elizabeth, Elizabeth, who is wondering if guests can book land excursions on their cruise personalizers. Uh, for the cruise tour part, yes. Um, it's not as widely promoted as it would be for a cruise, uh, but yes, it can still be done on Cruise Personalizer. Uh, and if not, they can go to the desk in the lodge itself and book whatever they want from there. But yeah, it's all available on Cruise Personalizer as well prior to, to leaving, for sure. Okay, perfect. And it looks like that was all of our questions. Thank you so much for your time. Well, Thank thanks you everybody. For yeah, thanks everybody for joining us and learning a little bit more about this. Again, I can't stress enough, please reach out to your local BDMs. We're all here to help you uh, and support you and make you grow. So if you have any questions or need anything to do with Alaska, reach out and uh, we will certainly help you with that. It's one of our biggest destinations for us and so very popular with everybody that uh, we're all sort of very well schooled in this uh, destination because it's so it's such a big seller for our clients. So yeah, please reach out. Happy to help you. Sorry, just Sorry. very quickly, can you go over how people can find their BBM? We just got a couple questions from people. Oh, okay, of course. Yeah, if you're probably, if you're home based, you don't have much interaction with them because they tend to go more to brick and mortar stores. Um, but you can contact reservations, just call the regular reservations phone number, and uh, the res agent can actually look up via your phone number that you're booking through, who your BDM is, and give you uh, an email address where you can contact them. So just that simple, reach out to reservations and they'll connect you. Perfect, Perfect. very simple. Very simple. Yeah. Okay, I just want to remind really everyone nice. that this that was recorded. It'll be on CLIA Global, Global, CLIA's YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. And, and I will make sure that Wade has all of your emails so he can send you all of those beautiful video links and that chart and everything else that you guys have requested. Fantastic. Okay, thank you so much, and everyone have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Bye for now. Bye.